Yo, what's going on guys? Maldiva here. And today I'm going to be bringing you my complete Destruction Warlock guide for PvP. Mainly we're going to focus on how I play and the builds that I play for Solo Shuffle. Because I know that's the, the mode that everyone's kind of focusing on. So as you can see, I've been rank 3 to rank 1 in Solo Shuffle using this build. So it definitely works. And I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing. And hopefully to help you push rating in Solo Shuffle and PvP in general. So starting off, we're going to go at the, the talents. This is the build that I play for solo shuffle first talent is going to be demonic circle you definitely need this because if you do not have portal you're not going to be able to escape danger this is major major defensive cooldown for warlock and it can also be offensive depending on how you use it and it's a pretty short cooldown as well then moving on we have demon skin so your soul each absorption now passively recharges this is really huge if you're not actively doing damage you're going to be getting your soul each regenerating even if you're not in combat or fighting them and it'll also absorb up to 15 percent of your maximum health now then we get fell armor when soul each absorbs damage 10 percent of the damage taken is absorbed and spread out over five seconds and also reduces our damage taken by three percent so these are going to be two really important defensive talents that you're going to want that's going to be what makes us so tanky and then over here we're going to get the curses so we can be very disruptive. Our, our key is to be able to peel for our teammates with the least amount of globals as possible. So these curses are really, really going to help. As you see later on when we go down to amp curse, I'm just going to keep going to the right and then down. So we'll do it in order. The next up is going to be coil. This is very, very important because there's going to be ways where you can coil multiple targets, not just one. So it's really good for destruction and also the heal on top of it is a nice added bonus and now here we have amp so amp curse is going to work with this curse of enfeeblement talent right there and it basically has an amplification on each curse that you do so curse of exhaustion you can increase the move speed slow the curse of tongues you'll increase the cast time slow but on them and then curse of weakness the enemy is unable to critically strike this is going to be massive for melee when you're trying to peel them off of yourself or your teammates so you definitely want to look out for that putting curse of weakness up on them demonic embrace just for some extra stamina because warlock has a lot of defensives that scale based on our health so you want to increase that as much as possible to make us as tanky as we can demonic inspiration we just use this to buff our sacrifice damage i'm a big sacrifice player i know some people play with pet but i prefer to play sacrifice so i'm going to be picking up this talent and then also Wrathful Minion is going to increase the sacrifice damage again by 15%. And then you'll see it's pretty high up on our damage breakdown. So very, very important damage talents right there. Demonic Fortitude just to increase our max health. As we said earlier, health scales on some of our defensives. So very important. We got Teachings to reduce the cooldown of Amp. So we can get more of those big Curse of Weaknesses and big Curse of Tongues out. This is going to be very, very annoying for the enemy. So definitely important to put that point there. Sweet Souls, your Hellstone heals for an additional 10%. And when your party members use it, it also heals you. Sometimes this talent bugs out. I don't know. I'll see it working sometimes and then other times it's not. But either, either way, I just get it because we need some of the talents below it. And there was nowhere else to put that point. The extra 10% is pretty nice because I think that's consistent. It's just the other part of the talent doesn't really work as well. Demonic Gateway is going to be our next big escape mechanism on top paired with our portal. So you're definitely going to want to pick that up right there. Dark Pact is our shield. This thing is going to be based on our health. So as I said earlier, increase your health. We have defensives that scale with our, our HP. As you can see, Dark Pact. So the higher your health, the bigger the shield. And the higher health that you sacrifice, the more shield you're going to get. Strength of Will. So Unending Resolve reduces damage taken by an additional 15% instead of the cooldown reduction. I go for this because in Solo Shuffle, the games are pretty short. Normally, I'm only getting maybe one wall per game. Two, eh, debatable based on the talent at the bottom of the tree that I'll go over later that can reduce the cooldown. So I'm always going for Strength of Will because when I wall, it's very important. I need as much damage reduction as possible. And then Shatter Fury gives us a nice added peel in Solo Shuffle if you don't have an active stunner on your team and... It's, it also can help you set up kills. Uh, we don't have any stuns. This is the only thing that we got. Unfortunately, it has a cast time, but it's better than nothing. And then over here, we get Frequent Donor. I go for the reduced cooldown on Dark Pact over this. Just It reduces the amount of 
that it takes out of your health. I, I like the reduced cooldown because I'm dropping Dark Pack just ASAP, just throwing it out there because it's only 45 seconds. And it's huge. Very nice defensive cooldown that you want to trade when the enemy is bursting you. So I love the reduced cooldown on that. And then we go for Lifeblood. So when you use a Hellstone, you gain Leech. Not all that important, but we're using it to get down to the, the talents that are over here. So yeah, not super important, but just using it to connect then we have Fell Synergy. Soul Leech also heals you for 15% and your pet for 50% of the Absorb it grants. So you definitely want to buff that Soul Leech healing. It's a lot paired with um, Dark Pact. Like Dark Pact and Soul Leech, those are going to be your major heals and the way to make yourself tanky. So very important talent to pick up. And then we get Soul Link. While Grimmer Sacrifice is active, your stamina is increased by 5%. If you had a pet out, you would be able to split 10% of the damage, but I like to play with Sac. So we get extra stamina for the bigger shields and bigger soul each. Over here we have Resolute. I choose to only put one point in it because the one point actually has a ton of value. If you see, the next rank only knocks five seconds off of it. So two points, adding that extra point is not as much value as just putting one in there to try to get that next on any resolve in solo shuffle. If you choose to like throw it out early or something or for some reason... The game goes for a crazy long amount of time and the dampening is just building. So I like having one point just for that. Grimoire of Synergy. There has been a hot fix. So now Synergy works while you sack your pet. It didn't used to work like that. So you, you needed to have a demon out to send the 10% damage or 10% increased damage to and for them to attack and then send it to you. But now you can proc it on yourself. So this is huge. You definitely want that 10% increased damage. And I also go for Profane a Bargain. So while Sack is active, your stamina is increased by 5%. Same thing, like Soul Link. Extra health, bigger shields, bigger Soul Leech. So I just go put points in that. You could probably sacrifice the points in this for something else, because it's not that much. But I like to get as much health as possible, and I didn't see as much value in the other talents. And then Soul Conduit, every Soul Shard you spend has a 10% chance to be refunded. This is very important, because you're going to be cycling through shards a lot. So I, I pick up this one, and it also connects to our big, big cooldown at the bottom. We'll talk about that after this one. But then lastly, over here, we got Inquisitor's Gaze recently got buffed in um, a hotfix. So it does a little bit more damage, still not a crazy amount, but I don't like missing out on that damage, so that's why I'm specced into it. And then here we go. The big, major, major cooldown is going to be Soul Burn. Cost a shard and amps. Your portal, your gateway, drain life, health funnel, health zone, all of that. So I have them macroed into all those abilities to just cycle through these because it really buffs them depending on what you're, you're doing. It'll help you kite and get your gateway out ASAP. Now moving on to the class talents. People are going to be playing maybe similar builds to this, but also could be somewhat different because they recently buffed Soulburn, for instance, or um, Soulfire. But I don't really like the Soulfire playstyle at high level. I think it works maybe at lower levels, but I, I don't think it's that crazy. It does hit very hard, though. But I just prefer to play without it. So anyways, let's get into it. First up, we pick up Chaos Bolt. Obviously, you need to pick that so you can start the tree. Then we get Conflag. This is huge to um, reduce the cast time of Chaos Bolt. And also, Soul Shard Generation. It's going to be huge for the Soul Shard gen. And the recharge time is affected by haste. So haste is going to reduce that recharge time. Over here, we got reverse entropy. Your spells have a chance to grant you 15% haste. I am a big, big haste fan. Destro has a lot of ways to scale off of haste. So I try to get as much as possible. And that's why we picked this up. Then we got backdraft. So this is the um, buff that's going to come when you can flag to reduce the cast time of your Incinerate, Chaos Bolt, or Soul Fire, and has a max of two charges. So when you're going for bolts, you're going to want to have this backdraft proc up at all, all times. It's not a good idea to try to cast a bolt without the proc, maybe unless you have the 50% reduction proc, but yeah, always try to have these up for that. Then I'm specced into Mayhem. I might start experimenting without this talent and changing it up since they nerfed uh, part of it. But basically, you have a random chance to proc Havoc on your targets just by attacking them. And then the damage on the Havoc enemy is going to be 60% of the normal damage that you're doing to your main target. And there's going to be a way where you can proc an AoE Havoc on the ground with a PvP talent that we'll talk about later on. And it pairs really well with this talent. 
And then over here, I, I choose to pick Roaring Blaze because I want to increase the damage, as you can see, of your Immolate, Incinerate, and Conflag by 25% when you can flag them. Instead of the additional charge, I just feel like this has way better value over um, the improved Conflag. And then we have Explosive Potential. Reduce the cooldown of Conflag by 2 seconds. Definitely important. Conflag is going to be one of our major Soul Shard generators. That's instant cast, so definitely want that. And then over here we have Pandemonium increases the base duration of Havoc and Mayhem as an additional 10% chance to trigger. So that just goes hand in hand with this talent up here. And we need it to connect to the bottom row. So that's why we picked that up. And then we have Shadow Burn. So this is going to be a way to spend your soul shards instantly without having to open up your cast bar. And it has a small little execute thing on it. So you'll gain 50% increased crit on targets that have 20% or less health. So this is a very, very important spell. And it's also affected by haste. So haste is going to reduce the cooldown or the restart, recharge time of this spell as well. Then we have backlash. So this is going to increase your crit chance and physical attacks against you have a chance to make your next incinerate instant cast. This is huge because we have a talent at the bottom that increases our incinerate damage. Incinerate, there's a way to make it hit as hard as Chaos Bolt and even harder if it crits. So this is a very, very important talent to have when you're getting trained by melee. And then we have Conflagration of Chaos. Conflag and Shadowburn have a 50% chance to guarantee your next cast of the ability to critically strike and increases damage by your critical strike chance. So you definitely want that. We have a pretty good amount of, uh, or a pretty high crit chance based on all these, like, in increased crit talents and then just naturally the spells critting when they're they're low like the shadow burn when you hit them under 20 percent and we have the four set bonus so we'll go over the four set bonus later on flashpoint this is going to be huge because as we said earlier haste affects the recharge time of conflag and shadow burn so when you immol immolate deals damage to a target above 80 percent health you'll gain four percent haste up to three times so up to 12% haste for 10 seconds for, for keeping up your immolates on a target above 80% health. So you're definitely going to want to have that up. Scalding Flames increases the damage of immolate by 25%. Immolate is going to be pretty high up there on our damage breakdown. It's a really powerful dot and one of our only dots with this build. So definitely worth buffing it. And we also need it to get to the next talent under it. Sacrifice. We'll go over that in a bit. We have Ruin. Increase the damage of Conflag, Channel Demon Fire, Shadow Burn, and Soul Fire. So increasing the damage of Conflag and Shadow Burn is going to be very important because those are going to be our main abilities that we're always pressing. So that's why you're going to want to pick that up. We have Eradication. They recently changed this because it was only on Chaos Bolt, but now Shadow Burn increases the damage you deal to the target by 10%. Only Chaos Bolt was doing this beforehand, but now we have Shadow Burn putting up Eradication. So I opt for this instead of Rolling Havoc, which we used to play. And then Ashen Remains, Chaos Bolt, Shadow Burn, and Incinerate deal 10% increased damage to targets affected by Immolate. You're always going to want to try to have an Immolate at least on your kill target because your spells are going to hit harder against it. So definitely want to play um, for this talent. And then we have Sacrifice. So when we were going over the normal class talents, there was a bunch that were buffing this spell. Instead of playing with a pet out, you're going to be sacrificing it and then gaining its major ability. So Spell Lock for the Fell Hunter. And then your, your spells will have a chance to do additional damage, which you'll see on the damage breakdown. It'll be pretty high, so definitely important to get. Damage is super high value in Solo Shuffle. Everyone just goes in there, turns their brain off, and just spams damage. So if you could do a lot of damage, you're going to increase the chance of you winning those Solo Shuffles. And we here we have Infernal. You're definitely going to want to pick this up because Infernal, it's a mini stun, does AoE damage, and also increases your shard generation, so... Definitely, definitely important spell right here. Then we have Ritual of Ruin. So when you spend 15 shards, it'll make your next Chaos Bolt consume no shards and have a 50% reduced cast speed. So with my build, I'm not really focusing too much on Chaos Bolts, especially if I can't free cast, but every 15 shards, you're going to get this really fast cast bolt, which you'll pretty much always get off, especially if you have a backdraft up. And then we have Madness. This spell is pretty crucial because if you see chaos bolt increases the damage of chaos bolt by 25 percent and the cast time by 20 percent for four seconds so if you do 
two bolts back to back, the second bolt is going to do more damage and have a reduced cast speed. So you're always going to want to look to set them up when you have enough for two. I, I kind of rarely only go for one. I'm always trying to get that second one off because of this added benefit. And then the same thing on Shadowburn. Shadowburn increases the damage of Shadowburn by 25% for four seconds. So I'll like Shadowburn can flag, Shadowburn can flag, something like that to try to keep doing them back to back with this buff. And then burn to ashes. So Chaos Bolt and Reign of Fire increase the damage of your next two incinerates by 30%. And then Shatterburn also now, this is a, a change they didn't have before. Shatterburn will also increase the damage of your next incinerate by 30%. So it'll Shatterburn will grant one, but Chaos Bolt and Reign of Fire are two. And the stack's up to four times. This is going to be very, very crucial. I'm going to always be looking to spend my Burn to Ashes procs. Because these incinerates, if they crit, can hit pretty hard around like 100,000. It's going to be more than a, a Chaos Bolt. And then lastly, we have Dimensional Rift. This is one of my favorite spells because one, it generates soul shards. And then two, if you RNG the really good Rift, this is going to be some scary, scary burst. So I can go in there. I force cooldowns on the enemy. He has no defensives. I'll drop three Rifts, get crowd control on the healer, and then boom, almost guaranteed kill or a major cooldown used. And now PVP talents. So I'm pretty much saying with these three baseline, Cremation, this this does a lot of damage if you look at the, the damage breakdown. As long as you're keeping up your immolates, your conflag is going to deal an additional damage. And it's based on the target's max health too. So it'll always scale. Precog. This is what you're going to use to get bolts off. If you can fake the kick and get a precog, whenever I get that precog proc, boom, I'm chucking those bolts out. And then lastly, Bane of Havoc. This is what you're going to want to use and pair it up with Mayhem because you're going to proc the Bane on the ground. And it's randomly just going to proc under people's feet. And then you could duplicate all your spells. It's only going to be 60% damage, but it's still pretty good when you're trying to cleave them. Or you have melee just sitting on you, training you the whole game. All right. Now, taking a look at gearing. So typically the stats that I go for are pretty much just full haste verse. I'm trying to get as much haste as possible, but also keeping that verse so I'm not squishy and it also has the the damage increase unfortunately our mastery got nerfed and they took the damage reduction off of it so it's not as high value as the versatility but anyways m here we go so i'm actually testing out this crafted headpiece this thing is actually kind of insane especially if you fight let's say demo warlocks or unholy dks and what it does at the bottom damaging a new enemy grants you 239 haste for 10 seconds up to five stacks now that is a lot of haste whenever i fight death knights because of the the banes proccing on the ground and our new pets and like bm hunters demo locks all of that i can get this up pretty much the whole game now for other uh, like opponents that don't have as many pets yeah you're not going to be proccing a lot it a lot which is fine but i i just like the stats on it as well because the haste is really high compared to the other helmet so that's just why I use this, especially for Destro. And then the neck, we have the Haste Averse Gems. You're going to get all this stuff on the Auction House. I do have the Lariat as well. This is also another option if you don't have the Crafted Helm. I've been using the Lariat. It's also an, a nice option. But you can only use two, as you can see. So I can't use the headpiece and the neck since I have the, the belt, which we'll go over in a bit. And then I have the four set. If you see down here, consuming soul shards is a chance to grant you chaos maelstrom, increasing your crit chance by 10%. And then your crits deal 208% damage instead of their usual 200%. Now I've heard uh, like mixed uh, reviews, I guess, on this set. People are saying they don't really think the four set's worth it for Destro. I'm still kind of on the fence. I don't really know. I kind of just go in where the set but I could potentially just wear two set, which is the minimum that I would wear, and then get the better stats for wearing the other pieces because some of the stats on this gear isn't all that great. But for now, I mean, I'm just using the four set. It's not that big of a deal. And here we got the speed enchant on our cloak. For the chest piece, we have stats. On my bracers, I was able to put a socket because if you select the vault, if you get the tokens, the vendor is right next to it, and then you can buy sockets for a couple of your pieces. And this is going to be with the speed enchant. 
On my weapon, I also have the haste proc enchant. And then we have the tier gloves, the belt. This is also a crafted piece. Very important because it's going to reduce the duration of incoming crowd control. And it scales up to 424 in PvP. So definitely very, very important to have this. And then on my pants, I have the 177 intellect and 105 stamina enchant. Boots, we have speed and I have the world PvP boots just because they're haste verse and there's none haste verse from the vendor. I'm using the haste verse ring and then also the primary stat haste gem with the haste enchant on top of it. And we have the crafted ring. I was able to get this at a 418 level with the haste enchant and haste verse gem on it. This is kind of complicated to, to craft because you need this the higher reagents that you get for doing like high-end mythic plus high-end rating and i think pvp over 2400 so it's a little bit harder to get this eye level but you could still make it at just at a, a lower item level and you can wear this with two of these embellished ones because only the embellished ones count that have the procs on them for the unique equip too then I have the normal medallion since I'm an orc. I need the PvP trinket and proc trinket. All right, now it is time for the good stuff. So I'm going to kind of go over the priority system <clears throat> and my general mindset when I'm in solo shuffle or PvP in general as a Destro Warlock. And also, I want to just make this clear. The way that I play and my priority system is probably going to be different from the other Destro locks because some people like to Shadowburn first, some people like to Conflag first. We all have our preferences. So I'm just going to go based on what I do and what works in Arena. So I, I just had to get that out of the way. But without further ado, here we go. So when I jump into Arena, I'm, I'll go over like a typical opener. So let's say this PvP dummy, I'm getting out. I already got my port gate set up. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go and put the conflag just so I can get my shard gen going. I can also get the buff up and then I'm gonna spend my shadow burn. I wanna get these both on cooldown as fast as possible because they recharge so fast. So again, I will go like conflag, shadow burn, conflag, shadow burn. I'll typically do that before putting my emulate up I don't, I don't really like to put on my emulate first i'd rather just shoot those out because they're instant and it's a little bit easier but sometimes depending on the situation i will put the emulate out but most important just make sure at least you use one charge of each and then you, you can get your your emulates out and now as you can see i have my backdrafts and i've kept my burn to ashes procs so what i could do is i could just start incinerating to spend these and totally just not even worrying about Chaos Bolt. I see a lot of people, what they're worried about is trying to get out as many bolts as possible. And it's really not that important. I would save that for when, if you're like an advanced, advanced player and you're able to read the game and know when you can get the guaranteed bolts off. Like right here, double bolt. I had two backdrafts and I had enough shards for both. But if you're a beginner, I would say stop focusing so much on Chaos Bolt. It sounds weird, I know, but that's what I do even in the high level games because high level players, they are really good at stopping Bolt. So a lot of the times I just barely even press it. I'll just use my Conflags, my Shadow Burns, keep up my Emulate, spend my Burn to Ashes procs. And that's pretty much just like the basic, basic rotation. Once you get the 15 stack, like the Impending Ruin, then you could send the Bolt or whatever. But yeah, outside of that, this is kind of my uh, general thought process and then you kind of incorporate the infernal you can infernal stun for setup just to get some pressure rolling right away same thing with the rifts you could either send three rifts right out the bat because you know you're going to have guaranteed cc on the healer or you're just trying to force a defensive cooldown out of the enemy or you can save them maybe use one so a lot of the time after i do my usual initial opener i'll send one rift just to start getting it on cooldown and then when I'm ready, when I see fit, I will go in and then drop the double or maybe even the triple if it was long enough and it already came off on cooldown. But that's just what I like to do right away is just get these cooldowns. Get them off cooldown, have them recharging ASAP because you, you never know when you'll, you're you going to need that burst. And then let's say you get into the situation, you'll have the double conflag, the double shadow burn right when you need it. But you just always want to be getting this instant pressure out 
Because if, if you spend time trying to cast when you don't need to and then you get kicked and then you, you're sitting there, let's say you get kicked on fire. Yeah, not a big deal. But then you can't use your conflags and you're sitting on two charges of conflag. So that's why I like to get them out first. And then you can start spreading your immolates. But I, I don't focus too, too much on spreading immolates. So I know a lot of people try to prioritize it. Like they'll they'll do their conflag, their shadow burn, and then they're like, oh my god, all right, immolate on this guy, oh my god, immolate on this guy, and then this guy, and then they get kicked, and then they get crowd controlled. See, for me, I don't really focus super, super hard. I'll immolate when I have a free chance, but I'm trying to prioritize using the conflag and the shadow burn before doing it. Then I'll spread my immolates when these are on cooldown, just to maximize my damage and my instant pressure, because these are going to be the big, hard hitting abilities. And they also give you your stacks. So now you can see, like, I got my Bane procs. Now I can um, apply my Immolate since my Bane procced on all these dummies. So now I have Immolate on all of them. And I don't even have to worry about really refreshing it now because of that. So you want to look for good Bane procs. And then also get your Coil out when you have your Bane. You want to look, look for those. And that's going to be kind of like the big, big major things to look out for. So most important, just... Do not worry too much about Chaos Bolt because you're going to get into trouble. If you get kicked on Chaos, it's going to be a disaster. And then I'm going to talk about like fake casting now. So the, the good thing about Destro is we have a Fire School and we also have the Shadow School. So you can get kicked on Fear because most people are going to kick Fear because they don't want to get feared and you could potentially be crowd controlling the healer. So guess what? I want to cast my Incinerates. What I'm going to do is go for the Fear, get kicked on Fear, and then I'm free to cast my incinerates. Or I'll go for the juke. You can juke with fear because people are most likely going to want to kick that. Same thing goes with Chaos Bolt. Although I do not recommend juking with Chaos Bolt unless you really know what you're doing. Because if you get locked on the Chaos Tree, you're going to be locked out on everything. So don't feel like you need to do that. A lot of the times people will even kick fire in Arena. Surprisingly. Because they know how scary our fire spells are now. So you don't even need a juke. You can just go there, cast your emulates, incinerates, and get the kick. And then you'll be free to fear people because of that. All right, so now I want to talk a little bit about defensive play and positioning in solo shuffle. This is where people are going to be screwing up the most. In solo shuffle, the biggest thing you need to make sure is, one, you have a nice gateway set up out typically either to a pillar or the middle of the open. And then two, you have a port set up. At the start, you're going to want an LOS port where the port is behind a pillar so you can port to safety. But then once you start pushing up, maybe you don't have a, a good clean pillar to put your port. You can put it in the mid map, but have it near your gate. So then you can also gate out directly out of danger if it's, it starts getting rocky. So typical position is boom, here's my port. There's my gate. Boom, gates to the center of the map, let's say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go push out here and start fighting right around my gateway right here. So if anything happens and I need to port because it's an emergency, I have, I have it available right there in the back and I'm in range of it. And then middle position is going to be great because your healer is going to be sitting back. He's going to have the pillar and that whole wide open space if he needs. And then you could just plant. So you want to be able to sit here and plant as long as possible. If the momentum is on your guy's side, and your healer's doing well on mana. He's he's um, able to heal it pretty easily. And the momentum is looking like it's in your favor. But if it's not, then you're going to have to drag the melee back. Because if you play with the melee and they're in perfect line and range of their healer, they're just going to get healed and they're never going to get off of you. Because I know that's a, a big major complaint is the Warlocks can't get the melee off of them. So the way that I'm going to rotate my cooldowns usually is I'll usually trade out the Dark Pact. We're going to want to look to use the shorter cooldowns first so it'll usually be like dark packed then i'll port once i'm my health is start getting low and it's not looking too pretty and then depending on the situation if my healer is able to top me or not i'll most likely either stay at this pillar until my port is back up or i will move back to the center of the map before my port is up waiting and ready to gate back so i'm in my nice comfy middle position again my healer has the great wide open in the back i'm going to sit here and either wait for my port cooldown or if my port doesn't come up in time this is going to be when we're going to gate and then the same thing we could either kite to the left or the right 
get distance from our port now because port's going to be the next cooldown that we're going to use. And also we have dark pack now, so we're going to trade the dark pack before that port. You're either going to move right or go back to the center of the map and then port out of danger again. And then last resort, we're going to have the unending resolve when we're out of tools, the mobility's not enough. You need that damage reduction. But you want to try to save that for the last, last, like, the end game result. Because if you drop this wall early, you're going to be in some big, big danger. And then also the Hellstone as well. So Hellstone and Unending Resolve are going to be the major cooldowns. You want to try to hold those for as long as possible. The Hellstone you can kind of throw out maybe semi in the middle of the game because Solo Shuffle with the dampening, your healer's not going to be able to heal. So once you see that you're like 50% and he can't really recover, help him out. Drop that Hellstone before the dampening ramps up a lot. And that's going to really help out a ton, is that positioning, because I see a lot of people screw it up. So just keep practicing. Make sure you're not dragging people onto your healer, and make sure you're not standing on top of your healer. You need to keep a good distance so he can play around you, and it'll make his life so much easier. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this guide helped. Don't forget to leave a like and comment down below. And I will also be doing guides just like this for the other specs. So if you want to see the other specs, let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video.